Hello. This is uh, Dr. Khalid Imran. I welcome you all uh, to the sixth session of the lecture series on uh, module five. That is, uh, uh, we have automation and robotics and machine tools. So far, we have finished uh, machine tools successfully. And uh, in the previous class, we had discussed uh, about uh, different milling operations like gang milling, straddle milling, uh, form milling. Uh, uh, once we had finished all these milling operations, then we started with uh, automation uh, and we had discussed uh, what exactly is advanced manufacturing systems. So when we speak of advanced manufacturing systems, uh, uh, like you know, I had told automation means a set of technologies carrying out a process without human assistance and achieves performance superior to manual operation. So be it your uh, uh, CNC machines uh, or be it your you know, huge machining centers like turning centers, you have milling centers, uh, then you have drilling centers or it can be combination of turn drill center, turn mill center. So all this sophisticated machine tools, uh, unlike your conventional machine tools uh, and you have the robotics or the robots uh, added to uh, your uh, automated guided vehicles, then we have PLCs, then we have automated in storage retrieval system. All this put together, uh, they form the advanced manufacturing system. I can say automation is composed of sophisticated machine tools like uh, turning centers that is CNC machines plus robots plus your uh, PLCs, ASRAs and your uh, automated guided vehicle systems. So you'll be having various work cells in these work cells, everything is automated. So there is least human intervention or no human intervention at all. So when you speak of automation, automation is a set of technologies to carry out processes without human assistance. And it achieves performance very superior to the manual operation. So it is like it seems that human being when he operates a particular mission from morning to evening, he gets exhausted there is fatigue, there is exhaustion, on account of which the efficiency of his or her work drops down. So in, in order to you know come out of this limitation, to overcome this limitation, automation is the best solution. So most of the multinational companies, manufacturing, big manufacturing companies, they will go for automation who can afford it. So you know basically there are three types of automation uh, as we had discussed earlier one is fixed automation one is programmable automation one is flexible automation so in fixed automation fixed automation is suitable for mass producing industries wherein they manufacture only one type of product whereas programmable automation or soft automation is one wherein you know one can produce a variety of products for example the hardware products such as knobs handles hinges and all so one shift will produce knobs, the next shift will produce handles. So we have flexible mode, means uh, a variety of uh, products can be produced depending upon the program. So program can be changed for every shift. Whereas in fixed automation, they use a special purpose machines for mass production. So the volume of production in fixed is very, very huge. Whereas the volume of production in programmable is comparatively lesser. So flexible automation is a combination of both fixed and programmable automation. This we had discussed earlier. So the basic elements of uh, any automation system uh, will be, it will be having a power source, it will be having program of instructions, and it will be having a control system. Uh, and we'll discuss what exactly is open loop and closed loop systems uh, in the succeeding slides. And uh, we discussed what exactly is a computer numerically controlled system. Um, uh, so it is an uh, you know, advanced form of NC system. I can say NC, NC stands for numerically controlled machines. So this numerically controlled machines came into existence somewhere in 1940s. Uh, one Mr. John Parsons, he came out with uh, this particular uh, NC system wherein you know, the operations were made automatic, like uh, the alphanumeric data was encoded on punched tapes. And these punched tapes, when they were uh, uh, stored in memories, and when there was some interface between the memory, the amount of memory was very, very small during that time. So when these memories were interfaced with machine tools like uh, um, automatic machine tools like lathe and all, the operations were performed automatically. So that is all about your uh, numerically controlled machines. NC machines are not part of your syllabus, but CNC definitely is a part of your syllabus. 
so here it says that cnc machine that is computer numerically control machine is an advanced form of numerically controlled system where the machine control unit is dedicated micro computer instead of hard wired controller so in your conventional numerically controlled machines so we can come stage by stage earlier there were only conventional machines like simple speed lathe engine lathe uh, then you had turret lathe uh, capstan lathe so uh, after a certain period nc came into picture this conven what we call conventional nc numerically controlled came into picture now we have the latest technology latest development on account of which we have computer numerically controlled machines so the hard wire controller which was available in numerically controlled machines is replaced by a micro computer so because of uh, you know huge technological advancements in the field of computer technology in computers cnc machines also uh, you know they were integrated with micro computers and uh, many tasks many 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 tasks like you know uh, a variety of products were, would manufactured using cnc machines because there were huge memories in uh, there are huge memories in computer numerically control there are you know uh, improved servos yeah the last statement the improved servos like you'll be having uh, stepper motors you'll be having servo motors you'll be having linear motors and uh, the amount of memory is huge you'll be having huge ram and huge huge rom a uh, good bus architecture because of the, the latest developments in your computer technology even cnc technology has grown leaps and bounds so you know cnc technology has powered the entire machine tool industry uh, has uh, yeah of course uh, uh, yeah cnc technology what uh, has powered the machine tool industry and uh, it is used in most of the manufacturing industries like uh, they use for machining centers a machining center can be a turning center it can be uh, a milling center it can be a drilling machine a huge drilling machine we see a drilling center it can be huge surface grinder cylindrical grinders and all it can be combination of uh, once again turning and milling turning and drilling so on and so forth so uh, the last statement as i told you earlier today's cnc controllers has latest features like high speeds of operation Uh, large memories bus architecture and improved servos we will we'll see to in the coming uh, slides in succeeding slides so this is all about your components of uh, computer numerically controlled machines so a cnc machine uh, this is the uh, these are the important elements in a cnc system and uh, you can see this is the input device then we have your machine control unit mcu this is your machine tool machine tool the machine tool can be a drilling machine it can be a milling machine it can be a grinding machine uh, it can be a lathe anything so a machine tool is a general machine tool which is shown here which can be a lathe or a grinding or a drilling or a milling or a shaper then we do have a driving system which comprises of various types of uh, drives like you know rotary drives linear drives uh, rotary drives like we'll be having you know a stepper motor or a servo motor then we need to have a feedback system why because in in the in your nc systems there was no feedback system actually um, but because of the you know uh, advent of uh, uh, many param many you know devices like transducers tachometers accelerometers and all the feedback system was very robust today we have a very robust feedback system any cnc machine will be having a very good feedback system Um, and uh, you will be having a display unit here these are the main features are the components of cnc machine one is your machine control unit uh, in the machine control unit uh, you have data processing unit and you have control uh, loop unit so this mcu uh, the machine control unit or generally we can say the control unit forms the very heart of the entire cnc system so the entire the machine the input devices the driving system the feedback system everything depends upon your machine control unit which comprises of a micro computer um, uh, wherein it it passes the signal to the machine tool to perform any given operation so we have the input device uh, the from the input device uh, like you know the part programs are fed what is a part program we'll see to it Uh, see there are uh, all these devices are briefly explained here in the succeeding slide so if you see this a cnc system consists of the following element one is the input device so when we speak of the input device it can be just a universal serial bus port usb 
or it can be you know a rs232 port and will be having rs232 cable so either like you know the cnc machine in the cnc machine data can be transferred what is the data here the data is nothing but the part program so like you know a program is written with respect to the part which is being manufactured or which is being machined on that given machine tool so it can be a lathe wherein the turning operation takes place so one should know um, what exactly a part program is if you see this particular slide here this is just an example of part program so a part program comprises of uh, algorithms you can see various lines here it has its own syntax and uh, you can see various codes uh, g codes m codes and all all g codes uh, you know are indicated here like in you know, a g code uh, nothing but drive rapid traverse nothing but the non cutting move the movement of the tool the movement of the work holding device means the tool is held in the tool holding device and the work is held in the work holding device uh, it is quite general across all the machine tools now uh, automatic there is an automatic movement of the tool holder and the work holder for example you have the chuck the chuck moves automatically like you know it, it will be having a linear motion it will be having rotary motion you will be having the tool holder which can move in any direction x y and z direction in any planes like x y plane you have x z plane you have y z plane so the tool can move in any plane any of any of the planes it can move in any direction similarly the work can also move in any of the directions like x y z in fact it can also move in any of the planes like x y x z or y z planes now these movements of the tools or the workpiece are given by these like you know codes g codes g codes g01 stands for straight line interpolation the cutting movement g02 is for circular interpolation g03 is circular interpolation likewise so once again you have you know m codes like you know machine stop m30 cool and m01 m02 m03 like spindle is rotating clockwise direction uh, anti clockwise direction and you have m30 program end end of the program m30 so a part program comprises of a series of commands like you have commands with respect to codes what are these codes these are g codes and m codes these are all numbers n n n numbers so like you know the feed rate the speed the spindle speed everything is given here see for example s stands for the speed 500 rpm f is your feed rate 100 mm per revolution so like you know these are the various parameters which are to be mentioned in the part program and this part program is nothing but the algorithm which is made by the part programmer so a person uh, you know known as part programmer he writes the entire program for a given part for well, this part is what it can be an automotive component it can be an aerospace component it can be a machine component anything so for a particular part be it your lathe be uh, be it uh, the part manufactured on the lathe or a milling machine or a drilling machine for every machine uh, there is a post processor like you know there are different types of uh, post processor like cinematic uh, human uh, humanary and all um, so basically based upon the post processor the part programmer writes a program now this is the input which is given to the cnc machine how do we do it there are different modes of it one can write the part program in a software the different softwares like the, you have a, a computer aided manufacturing softwares like mastercam um, then you have uh, ugnx there are different types of app softwares so using these softwares part programs can be written on a computer terminal and the same can be copied in a pen drive and it can be transferred to the cnc machine using a usb port you can see here this so input device we have a usb port the part program is the input here is entered into the cnc control through the usb or it can be connected to a computer directly by means of r232 port and rs uh, you have a cable also 232 cable as well as port then we have ethernet communication so a system will be having the ethernet the cnc machine will be having ethernet card so using that ethernet card ethernet communication is like a lan connection wherein the you know the transfer is very very quick and very fast compared to uh, usb transfer and rs232 port transfer then we have conversational programming here you will be having a display unit on the cnc machine itself so one can you know write a program uh, at the terminal itself where on the CN using the cnc machine uh, display unit 
so that the display unit is nothing but the conversational programming. You'll be having a small keyboard. So using that keyboard, one can start writing the program at the terminal itself. So these are the different modes. One can be the input, which is the part program, can be fed using USB, using a pen drive or a flash drive. One can use RS-232 port. They can use Ethernet communication system or it can be conversational programming using a keyboard. If you see this, this is your in, these are the input devices. So you can see this part programs are fed to machine control unit, right? So this machine control unit comprises of a microcomputer and data processing unit. You can see in this particular uh, slide that uh, machine control unit is the heart of the CNC as I told you earlier. It consists of uh, a CPU which is the brain of the entire system and it has huge memory like it will be having RAM, ROM and all. Like it is same as your computer system like a laptop or any desktop device. So you'll be having huge memory so that large amount of part programs can be conveniently stored into it. Then you have the input output interface. The input output interface uh, can be once again your uh, display unit wherein uh, the machine operator is, uh, you know, uh, is writing a program using the display unit directly at the terminal. Then we have the machine tool controls. All the machine tool controls wherein the spindle rotates at a particular speed. Then the table moves uh, with a particular speed to a particular location. So the movement of the tool as well as your workpiece in different directions, in X, Y, Z directions, in different planes and uh, in different rotational axis. The job or the tool can rotate in X axis, it can rotate along Y axis, it can rotate in Z axis. Now besides moving in all this axis, the tool and the work can also rotate. So that is the beauty like you know the machine control unit controls all these movements and even the auxiliary functions like as I told you the coolant on, the coolant off, we need coolant for better machining operations. So when, wherever there is tool work interface means whenever the tool is cutting the workpiece in a CNC machine definitely there will be huge amount of friction cost and this heat which is produced on account of friction should be dissipated, should be removed continuously. How? By using a coolant. So a coolant is a fluid which dissipates the heat to the atmosphere. So like you know coolant on, coolant off, whenever machining operation is taking place, the coolant is automatically discharged at the tool work interface. So like you know these are known as the auxiliary functions, coolant on, coolant off, spindle speed changes and machine stop, machine start. See these are all auxiliary functions. So the be it auxiliary functions, be it your machine tool controls or be it your input output interface, everything comes under your machine control unit. So this is your machine control unit. Now from this machine control, machine control unit, it reads the part program properly. In other words, I can say it interprets the part program correctly and then based upon the part program, based upon the instructions which are given in the part program, it sends the appropriate signal to the driving system or to the machine tool for miscellaneous functions. So the motion data is given. Signals are given based upon the instructions in the part program. So when the motion data is given to the driving system, now this is your driving system. What does the driving system comprise of? The driving system comprises of various things like it will be having amplifier circuits. Like you know the system can be amplified, it can be attenuated or it can be amplified. You will be having different types of drive motors like it can be a stepper motor, it can be a servo motor, then uh, there will be ball lead screws. So it is also a power transmitting element, a ball lead screws. All the stepper motors, the you know, uh, the servo motors, the linear motors, the all these things, uh, they get actuated, they get actuated, they will be functional or they will be in motion depending upon the signal you know given by the CPU nothing but your machine control unit so the machine control unit passes the signal to the driving system and the driving system all these motors they start functioning or actuating based upon that the machine tool starts functioning in fact the machine control unit also does all the auxiliary functions nothing but the miscellaneous functions um, are carried out in the machine tool based upon the signal given by the machine control unit to the machine tool. 
so you can see here the machine tool it can be any type of machine tool as i told you earlier as we discussed earlier the machine tool can be a machining center like a turning center a milling center a drilling center um, then a broaching center anything um, any machine can be a cnc machine any type of center can be accommodated here sometimes huge cnc machines will be having combination of you know turning and drilling Uh, then turning and milling we say turn drill center turn mill centers so a machine tool can be exclusively a turning center a milling center or a drilling center likewise or it can be combination of turning and drilling what we call as turn drill center turn mill center right uh, so this is all about your machine tool here then you will be having a feedback system a feedback system is the most important system which part which is a part of uh, a closed loop system so if we happen to see the feedback devices uh, for accurate operation uh, positional values and speed of the axis is accomplished by feedback devices like uh, a positional feedback devices then we have velocity feedback devices what exactly are these see if at all uh, the the work has to be moved exactly to 100 mm from the home position then we need to have some feedback mechanism to ensure that the work has moved exactly 100 mm neither 0.001 mm ahead or 0.001 mm back side so it has to move to the exact location so in order to ensure that the job is moving to the exact position or the tool is moving to the exact position for machining operation we need to have some measuring devices these measuring devices are known as transducers so generally we say like you know transducer is a device which converts any mechanical movement into digital form like for example we have a lvdt linear variable differential transformer or transducer so this lvdt is or it can be any type of transducer so this transducer help in measuring the position of the tool as well as work whether it has reached to the exact position or not then we need to check the rotary motion for example speed of the spindle uh, or speed of the job or the work piece or uh, speed of the drill bit or a reamer so like you know one has to ensure the exact rotation is the tool rotating at the exact rpm is the work rotating at the exact rpm this has to be done by using velocity feedback devices like you know tachometers you have tack generators accelerometers all these components forms your feedback devices so feedback is a very very important component and wherever there are feedback devices obviously the system becomes more costlier so if it is a closed loop system that is feedback system system becomes more costlier on the other hand if it is a open loop system there is no feedback device at all then it is less costlier compared to a closed loop system so a closed loop system is nothing but a feedback system a robust feedback system which gives the signal you can see here so assume that uh, you have the part program in the part program some operation like turning operation is the instruction of command now like you know this machine control unit it interprets the part program sends the signal to the driving system to a particular stepper motor or uh, servo motor so that the machine tool is functional now now uh, the feedback system has to ensure that assume that the rpm is uh, 1500 rpm which is given in the part program so the machine tool spindle should rotate exactly at 1100 1500 rpm if it rotates at 1449 rpm then the feedback system detects the speed and feeds to the machine control unit you can see as position feedback and velocity feedback both type of feedback is taken by the feedback system and fed to the machine control unit so there is a input output comparison the input was 1500 rpm but the output is 1449 rpm there is a difference of 1 rpm that is a error that error is automatically adjusted it is balanced it is corrected by what by the machine control unit once the feedback is given to the machine control unit the amount of error which is there between the input output is corrected and once again like you know the entire system is self corrected self corrected so ultimately uh, the, everything is set right and the machining takes place 
and you have a display unit here in the display unit one can witness the entire animation enter simulation rather the to the movement of the tool with respect to the work can be viewed in the display unit before the actual machining takes place so to ensure that machining is free of error there is no spoilage of work or there is no room for rework of uh, the job or the raw material uh, you know one has to witness how exactly the tool moves relative to the work if the tool is not moving based upon the you know desired program then once again the part program is corrected so you will be have you will be having a simulation one can uh, run the tool uh, so that the simulation is visible in the display unit once the operator is sure about the um the work tool interface with the if he sure about the tool movement it is correct exactly then then uh, you know the actual machining uh, can be started so we have the driving system you have the display unit it ensures interaction between the machine operator and the machine so it is nothing but an interface between the person who is operating the machine and a cnc machine so that before the machining process the operator will ensure that the tool is moving correctly with respect to the work once he ensures that then the operator and operator can go for the machining the actual machining process this is all about your uh, computer components of your cnc machine i hope you have understood this this part program you can witness this uh, particular video and you'll come to know about uh, what are the operations which can take place in a c which can take place in a cnc machine so in a cnc machine basically very critical components very intricate components like you know parts of uh, an automobile or aerospace components uh, like you know parts of turbine a turbine blades you will be having impellers which will be having very critical dimensions very critical very intricate dimensions very delicate dimensions sometimes which is not possible to be machined on a conventional lathe or conventional drilling or conventional milling machine very critical parts which is having you know very intricate shape can be very conveniently manufactured using a cnc machine so now you can witness uh, uh, some aerospace components being you know machined uh, in a cnc system so it can be a turning center or it can be a milling center it can be combination of any of the centers uh, you can just watch this this is the tool you can see here this is your insert an insert is made up of carbide material so one can have a single point cutting tool this is single point cutting tool but they don't use um, high speed steel uh, as it is used in your conventional machine tools like lathe and drilling machine a cnc turning center or a cnc lathe or a cnc drilling machine usually they use uh, an insert an insert is made up of a carbide material which comes in different uh, shapes and geometries you can see here right Uh, and this is the tool holder this is the work which is fixed in the chuck and a turning operation is taking place this is basically step turning operation 
a different operation, like tail turning operation, step turning operation, this step turning operation. So you can witness the raw material being cut in form of ribbons or kernings. See how beautiful it does. This is probably one of the critical component uh, uh, of a aeroplane or a fighter jet or it may be an automotive component which is to be very precisely manufactured all the dimensions. The speed is increased. So everything is automated. Everything is automatic. There is no human intervention at all. This is your finished turning operation. Cut cutting operation. Drilling or counter swimming operation. This is grooving operation. So this is a CNC turning machine or it can be what we call the turning center. Now this is a milling machine, a CNC milling machine. This is the end mill. You can see this, this is the end milling cutter. Um, I had explained about uh, milling operations. There are different types of milling operations like uh, side milling operation, end milling operation, slot milling operation, uh, form milling operation. So using an end mill, uh, one can uh, mill or remove the extra material from the bases of the given raw material like a or raw material. One can generate pockets, one can make grooves, key ways, key slots. So n number of operations can be performed. Now you can see the, 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 the operation which is taking place on a milling mission. It's a milling center. The CNC milling center. So the amount of time taken for the entire machining operation uh, is very very less compared to conventional machining. Even the quantum of accuracy and precision is so high that there is no match between uh, the operations and the conventional lathe and a CNC lathe. You can see here, like you know, this is an uh, islanding operation. There is a small island formed here. So the island is created. These are the probably the uh, turbine blades or something with the component having some blade like feature. You know, see the entire uh, work is uh, you know moving in different axes and different planes. The entire work is moving in different axes. As well as the tool is uh, relative to your work piece. There is a coolant being sprayed along with machining. So there are different degrees of freedom in a CNC machine by the virtue of which any type of component which is very critical, very intricate, having very complicated features within can be easily machined within a very shorter span of time with no human intervention in the least possible time with highest amount of accuracy and precision. 
that is the reason the entire manufacturing industry most of your multinational companies the transnational companies you know, the big conglomerates and all uh, which are the manufacturing sector they don't rely upon your conventional machines they go for cnc machines and entire automated system which will comprise of robots different types of cnc machines and all yeah so i hope uh, all of you have uh, understood uh, the working of a cnc machine what type of operations can be conveniently performed on a cnc machine so on and so forth so as i told you earlier a cnc machine can be closed loop or open loop but basically all your cnc machines be it your turning machine or drilling machine all these machines will be closed loop systems so before understanding the closed loop system uh, or open loop system you should know the circuitry of it you can see like you know you'll be having a controller you'll be having an actuator you have the process and we have the output variable and the feedback sensor so the input parameter is the pro part program which is fed to the controller nothing but the control unit uh, from the control unit it goes to the driving system the driving system like you know signals are given from controller to the actuator then we have from the actuator to the process process is the machine tool then you have the feedback system if at all if there is no match between input parameter and output parameter if the if there is no match that is the amount of error so that error is detected by the feedback sensor and it is given to the controller so there will be correction the correction is nothing but the actual output minus desired output the difference between the actual output and desired output is the correction that correction when fed to the controller then once again the operation becomes error free so in this control system the output variable is compared to the input variable and the difference between the output and input variable is sensed by the feedback system to drive the output according to the input requirements so this is a general perspective of automation where any system can be like you know, as i told you earlier also a cnc machine is part of automation a robot is part of automation be it a robot or be it a automated guided vehicle or be it your cnc machine all these things are parts of automation and every part of automation can be an open loop system or a closed loop system so this is an example of uh, closed loop systems general example not a not an example of cnc system but it is quite a general uh, example so one can see here if uh, uh, this analogy is with respect to a washing machine so we we need to have a desired dryness then we have the controller you have the heating elements in a washing machine then the clothes once they are cleaned and dried the actual dryness is measured if the actual dryness and the desired dryness are same then there is no error if at all if there is change in the input and the output parameter that is sensed that is sensed by a sensor this sensor is nothing but the feedback system see be it your transducer your tachometer the accelerometers all these things are sensors so the sen the sensor senses the amount or it compares and if at all if there is a, any error then that error is fed to the controller so that the entire system is self corrected on the other hand an open loop system is one where there is no feedback system so there is no device to compare the input parameter with the output parameter so if the system is very very robust which doesn't require any type of uh, feedback system or uh, if the part which is being machined is not a very critical part like uh, rough turning operation rough drilling operation is the objective of that particular mission then it can have an open loop system a closed loop system is not required in those cases so in a control system there is no comparison of the output variable to the input parameter since feedback element is missing here so uh, this is an example of an open loop system here uh, we can have a comparison this open loop system can be compared with uh, a manual washing machine not a automatic washing machine so whereas a closed loop system can be compared to an uh, automatic uh, washing machine like top load or front load washing machine which will be having uh, sensors devices to sense the error when it compares input and output the amount of error is sensed by a closed loop system you can see here so this this entire circuitry uh, can be compared with a automatic washing machine and this circuitry can be compared to 
a you know manual a um, conventional a manual washing machine wherein you will be having a timer they set the time for washing then uh, the clothes have to be put into the dryer for drying and things are not automatic but manual here they will be heating elements clothes comes out with the actual dry, dryness you will be having the desired time and the actual dryness there is no feedback mechanism in this case now if you see the you know closed loop and open loop system of a cnc machine this is your closed loop system and this is your open loop system wherein you can see in a closed loop system the communication is two way so if at all the cnc controller or the uh, control machine control unit this gives the signal here this gives the signal assume that it is giving the signal to this particular tool movement the z axis the tool has to move in z direction whether the tool is moved, moved exactly to the same location is sensed by the feedback system why because there is a loop here you can see so this red the red arrows indicate the feedback mechanism so this is the input this is the output if input and output coincides then there is no error similarly here to every to every part of the machine tool like you have the movement along x axis along y axis it can be a cross slide movement it can be saddle movement or the table movement this can be the spindle movement in z direction all this movement is having a loop here so there is input signal and output signal if the input and output matches there is no error if the input and output does not match then there is some sort of error we call it hysteresis then we have an open loop system here you can see it is only unidirectional all the arrows are moving in one direction there is no feedback system in this device so this is an open loop system so this is the same thing closed loop system you have the work table you have the servo motors this is a conventional closed loop system of a computer numerically controlled machine so you will be having some positional pause measure the measuring device like a transducer here the work table has to move to a particular direction or the work table has to rotate for a particular angle if the rotational movement of the work table is not precise it has if it is not uh, rotating at the desired angle that is sensed by the positional measuring device like a transducer and uh, it is like the feedback is fed to the position comparing device which is part of your control system then once again there is a speed control device which controls the speeds of the servo motor in turn the servo drivers uh, give signal to the servo motor the servo motor then rotates the table to the desired angle correct an angle that is all about your closed loop system of a cnc machine now these are the advantages of cnc machines um, the accuracy and repeatability is very very high when compared to conventional machines the repeatability as well as the accuracy and precision is very high in your cnc machine when compared to the conventional machine so any complex contours shapes can be machined which is not possible to be machined in conventional machines like a conventional lathe or a drilling or a milling or a grinding machine so like you know a variety of tasks variety of tasks can be performed or variety of product styles can be obtained having different geometries very intricate shapes can be produced very conveniently by because the program can be changed once the program is changed the part or the output also changes the component geometry the shape the size the dimension everything changes so a variety of products can be accomplished very high volume of production why because the lead times are nil almost uh, usually there will be somewhere around uh, 18 to uh 35 to 40 tools so uh, there you will be having a crib a crib is a library wherein the tools are kept so those to those tools are called and when they are called the tool moves from the crib from the library to the actual machining position and uh, there is very high because of reduced lead times the setup times are almost minimal almost zero because of very less lead times there is no lead time and the machining time is you know the machining time is very very less here because of uh, very high precise movements of the tool and the work uh, the machining takes place at a very faster pace thereby the volume of production increases so high volume of production compared to conventional machines and reduced lead times so like you know there is there is no setup time at all so lead times are reduced substantially it avoids errors 
that otherwise committed by humans operating on conventional machines obviously when a human being operates on a conventional machines mission like uh, a engine lathe or a speed lathe or a automatic lathe or a turret lathe uh, there can be huge amount of error why because when a human being operates a particular machine then he is operating for hours together when the amount of time increases then obviously the human beings gets get exhausted get tired and then there is more amount of fatigue on account of which errors creep in then uh, we have many cnc machines can be linked to the main computer so if many cnc machines are linked to the main computer then that is known as dnc direct numerically controlled machines then we have cnc machines can be used uninterruptedly unlike your conventional machines wherein the once the human being gets exhausted then he'll stop the machine intermittently whereas a cnc machine will run continuously uninterruptedly so use of cnc results in a safer environment there are less errors less accidents because everything is automated so we have a safer environment when compared to the places where there are no cnc machines so these are some of the disadvantage of cnc machines a thorough programming knowledge is required by the operator or the programmers a layman or any other, any other person like any tom dick and harry cannot go and operate a cnc machine he or she has to have the knowledge about the functionality of the machine one has to know all the features all the parts of the machines what is a spindle what is a turret what is a crib what is a tool library how exactly uh, the rotations are accomplished in different directions in different uh, axes the movements all these things have to be understood by the programmer so only a person who is having thorough knowledge about the cnc machine can write the program conveniently so besides having the knowledge of the machine tool a cnc machine one has to also have the knowledge of the algorithm how to write the program what are n codes what are g codes what are m codes all these things have to be very much clearly understood by the programmer so a skilled programmer is the requirement if the if there is absence of skilled programmer then that is a big limitation to the company or to the industry which is using the cnc machines then the cost of cnc machine is very very high compared to your conventional or traditional machine tools the spares are not available but now what is there available but they will definitely come at a cost then the cost is exorbitant the spares of cnc machines are relatively costlier when compared to conventional machines and cnc machines require air conditioned environment and a chiller unit you need to have a refrigeration unit and we need to have a air condition unit so that the machine will be having very delicate features uh, whenever we have electronics involved into it you have electronics you have a cpu right you have a microcomputer so all these things have to be placed or have to be operated at uh, you know uh, controlled conditions like standard uh, uh, temperature and pressure con- uh, conditions so if normal temperature or desired temperature is not maintained then uh, in a long run what happens the machine fails to perform in order to ensure that machine is functioning properly and to enhance the life of the machine we need to have the controlled conditions controlled temperature conditions by incorporating air conditioning systems refrigeration systems like chilling unit and all etc so obviously what happens the cost increases So this this all about your disadvantages of cnc mission then we have what exactly is a turning center and machining center so a machining center a cnc machining center can be a turning center it can be a milling center it can be a grinding center it can be a shaper a huge shaper a shaping mission so it all depends upon the fundamental classification depending upon the orientation of the spindle if the spindle is in a vertical plane that becomes your vertical turning center or turn a vertical cnc machining center so wherein the axis will be perpendicular to the work on the other hand it can be horizontal wherein the axis of the spindle is parallel to the work or the work surface or it can be a universal or omniversal you know cnc machining center a horizontal a, a universal is one which can be swiveled which can be tilted so a universal will be having more number of degrees of freedom when compared to vertical and horizontal machining centers so these are usually designed with features to reduce non productive time 
So when you speak of machining centers, the non-productive time, like fatigue of a operator, is reduced. It is eliminated. Then the setup times. Suppose you want to change the job, then there is no need of stopping a CNC machine and changing the tools, the work holding devices or the tool holding devices. Everything is programmed. The succeeding program will be having a different syntax, will be having different G codes, M codes. Based upon the instruction in the succeeding program, the job is carried out without stopping the machine. Without stopping the machine. So there are no lead times. So there is no non-productive time. So these features include your automatic tool changer movement. As I told you, a, a ordinary CNC machine will be having somewhere around 18 to 36 or 40 tools which are placed in the library or the crib. So that whenever a command is given, the tool moves from the library to the home position and then to the work tool interface and the work is and the you know machining is carried out. So automatic work part is positioned, we have automatic pallet changer, you will be having a turret wherein the tool can be indexed to the desired position. There is work part gauging. What is work part gauging? Whether the part is manufactured correctly or not, those dimensions are measured by the machine itself. That is known as process capability. Every CNC machine will be having good process capability. It measures, it is capable of measuring the process, whether the component manufactured is manufactured to the exact size or not, it is automatically checked or gauged by the machine itself. If there is some error, automatically it gets self-corrected. So tool monitoring is also done, whether the tool is worn out or not, whether it is getting wearing out. If the tool is wearing out at a faster pace, then the tool is changed. <coughs> so these are the, you know, different... Uh, uh, features of CNC machining or turning or milling centers. Um, so uh, here I come to the end of uh, today's session. So we have discussed many things. We have discussed what exactly are the machining centers, the important features of it, uh, disadvantage of CNC machines, advantages of CNC machines, what is a closed loop CNC system, what is a open loop CNC system here, the general closed loop system, the general open loop system. You also witnessed a video on CNC machine, how exactly the operations takes place. You have seen what is a part program, the different components of a CNC system. So this is the end of your uh, CNC uh, system, computer numerically controlled machines. The next topic which I will be discussing in the next session, in the next class, will be on the robotics. So I hope all of you have very clearly understood how exactly a CNC functions, what are the important devices or the features or elements of it, what are the advantages, what are the limitations, what is open loop system, what is closed loop system. I hope everything have, every, everyone have understood the same. Um, so thank you very much for uh, watching this uh, video. Uh, see you in the next session. So next session probably will be the last session, seventh uh, session of this series. Thank you very much for, once again, thank you very much for watching this video.